My name's Paul Truby. I'm 51 years old, and I'm the owner of Beltane Farm in Lebanon, Connecticut. And we make uh, goat milk cheeses and yogurt and raw milk and pasteurized milk. This is my 16th year, I think, of doing this. For me, the whole thing of all of this business has been because of the love of goats. <laughs> they're just great animals and I love them. You know, they're, that's the main thing I really enjoy is my work with them. And I love cows and I love cows milk and I love cows milk cheese, but it's a whole different ball game. It's the amount of food, the amount of water, the, the amount of impacts on, on, the, on the grazing, it's, it's huge. Goats are less likely to have that kind of impact. And so it's easier to keep them in a in smaller setting. You don't need as much land. There's something nice about that. When we first started, I was milking 12 goats. And now uh, we've gone through a, a couple different transitions. So we went to, from 12 goats to 40 goats to 60 goats to 75 and now last year we were at 100 and we're gonna be at 100 now. And I don't wanna get any bigger than that. We're pretty much, I think, at capacity. We're certainly at capacity for what I, what I wanna do. As you get bigger, things start to get more expensive. And we don't always think about that so much. We think like, okay, well if, we're milk, if, we, can, if we milk 25 more goats, then we can have this much more milk, but then okay, well now we're gonna need a new milking system, or if we're not gonna have a new milking system, we're gonna to have to have more people to help with milking. And so these costs that you're not thinking of come up. Sometimes it's smarter just to stay smaller because I think it can be more profitable in that way. For me, the most important way to, to get a customer base has been farmer's markets. Like for example, you go to a farmer's market, people start getting familiar with your product and then um, they, sit, they start telling other people about it or, and you start growing a little bit of a customer base and then someone says, you know what, I know somebody who has this store that would like to probably carry this. I'm going to talk to them if you don't mind and then they, that connection leads to another connection and, uh, and then if you're going to do something at the farm, like you're going to start a cheese tastings or at the farm or a farm day tour or something like that, then you have these great opportunities to have these flyers about it. They're going to say, come to the farm. So the, the farmer's markets have been like a real grassroots way of just broadening a connection to uh, your customer and then other, 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 um, other avenues. One of the things that has been helpful in growing the business a little bit for me has been experiencing and watching the tastes uh, uh, change of our customer base and interest in different cheeses and different aspects of the process that people are interested in. When I first started, fresh goat cheese was kind of like, oh yeah, it, it, I've had it, but it wasn't as common. They were familiar with just the fresh chef, the, the regular kind of goat cheese. And then a few years later, it, it, there were, you could start to see like customers were starting to ask about more sophisticated cheeses like uh, um, French style goat cheeses that were ripened that had like a, a bloomy rind like a camembert rind and that kind of thing and so that started to kind of get another sector of, 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 of a customer base there are people that like just the regular fresh chev but then there are other people that had been to France or were familiar with that kind of cheese more um, you just start to listen to people like, oh, I've had this kind of cheese, could we, I like this, have you ever thought about making this? So we think, okay, let's try that a little bit. So it's kind of nice to get that feedback from people, and it's really been that that's kind of led um, some of the, uh, of, 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 the, of the path of our product development a little bit. As of late, I'm pleased to see that questions have been, how are your animals raised, and how are they treated? And then I think that's such a great piece of part of the crisis that we're having, really, where we've just kind of given away our knowledge of food. And so, therefore, you have these, you know, big agribusiness industrial farms producing meat and uh, in, in ways that we might not want going into our body. So I'm pleased to see people um, asking those kind of questions and that's perfect for small farming because that's exactly what small farming is about. You know, a quality care of animals and a quality product.